Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at stock dividend issued by a subsidiary as well as dividend from pre and post acquisition earning. This topic is covered in an advanced accounting course and is covered on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers, which is you, to connect with me on a professional level via LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you create one. It's very important for your professional image and network ability. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I house all my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from them, other people might benefit as well. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram. This is my Facebook, and this is my website. So what is the big idea for this chapter? Or what's the big idea of stock dividend? Stock dividend is when the company doesn't want to distribute cash. They want to conserve their cash. Therefore, what they do, rather than paying cash in terms of dividend, they pay stocks. So the basic journal entry, which is something you have to be aware of or something you have to know from, from your intermediate accounting. So if you don't know what a stock dividend is or you haven't learned it before, I strongly suggest to go to my intermediate accounting, chapter 16. And I talk in depth about stock dividend. So stock dividend, when you declare dividend, you debit, that's just the basic idea, retained earnings. So you reduce your retained earnings because dividend comes out of retained earnings. You debit your retained earnings and you credit, depending whether it's a small or a large stock dividend, you may credit capital stock or you may credit capital stock plus additional paid in capital depending on whether it's a small or a large stock dividend. But that's the basic idea. Debit retained earning, credit capital stock or common stock, and credit additional paid in capital or APIC. The parent company, so when, when the subsidiary issues stocks, issue dividend stock, the parent company record the receipt of a share in a memorandum entry only. So there's no journal entry for the parent company. The parent company don't have a journal entry. The subsidiary records the declaration of a stock dividend as a transfer from retained earnings to one or more paid in capital. This is what this entry is showing you. Retained earning goes down, capital stock or common stock and additional paid in capital goes up. So basically what you are doing, you are transferring or you are capitalizing some of your earnings. So you're taking money out of retained earnings, not money, earnings out of retained earnings and increasing capital stock. Okay, The amount Transfer is dependent upon the dividend, whether it's a large or a small stock dividend. If it's a large stock dividend, we capitalize the number of shares times the par value. If it's a small stock dividend, we capitalize number of shares times the market value per share. So how, how, how many, however many shares we are, we are issuing times the market value. So this is basically, again, review from chapter 16, intermediate accounting. For consolidated purposes, so when we consolidate it, because this is an advanced accounting course, the stock dividend does not alter the investor's proportionate interest in the sub. So it doesn't really make any difference. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. That's the best way to see this. And I will show you how, you know, stock dividend doesn't really alter the total equity at the sub, let alone the parent position at the sub. So assume P company purchased 4,000 shares of S company at $100 par value common stock on January 2nd, 2012 for 560,000. At the time of the purchase, S company reported common stock and retained earning as follow. 500,000 of uh, common stock, 200,000 of retained earnings. Okay, let's assume we prepared the consolidated uh, financial statement as of January 2nd. So what do we need to do? We need to remove common stock. We need to debit common stock, capital stock for the sub company. We need to remove their earnings because those are the equity for the sub and the equity for the sub need to be need to be eliminated. Then we eliminate them against the, the investment account because we paid 560 and we established the non-controlling interest, which is the remainder 140,000. Okay, this is if we consolidate the January 1st. 
Now, at the end of the year, now assume that S company report $50,000 in income and declared 30% stock dividend, which is an additional 1,500 shares, 1,500 shares. Now, this is 30% is a large stock dividend. Why large? Because it's greater than 20 to 25%. 30% is greater than 25%. Okay, so it's a large stock dividend. Therefore, we capitalize 1,500 shares times the par value. The par value is, is, is 100. It's giving in the problem. Therefore, we are going to debit. We are going to debit stock dividend or retained earning. Retained earning eventually is close to stock dividend. I like to say retained earning, but if they're going to debit stock dividend declared, eventually they will close this account to retained earning and they will credit. They will credit common stock or capital stock. Okay, there's no additional paid in capital because the shares were issued at par. Okay, the shares would issue that par. Now, if they were, if there was a small stock dividend, you might have additional paid in capital, you know, some some amount here. Okay, but this is a large stock dividend. Now, this is S company. This is what S company would 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 record on their books. Okay, so notice S company increased their capital stock by one hundred and fifty. They used to have only five hundred thousand. Now, think about it. Now they have one hundred and fifty. And remember, the retained earning went down too. The retained earning used to be 200,000, now it's 50. P company, the only entry P company would make is a memorandum entry to record the receipt of 1,200 shares. Why 1,200 shares? Because they, they, they don't own 100% of the company. They don't own 100% of the company. It's 1,200 out of 1,500. They only own 80%. So they own 80% of the company, okay? So they will, the, the memorandum entry would look something like this, received 1,200 shares, which is 1,000 times 80% of S company common stock based on the declaration of 30% stock dividend. This is, this, this is what the memorandum entry is. And just to kind of let you know that um, the equity of S company did not change. This, this was their equity before the stock dividend, 500,000. And retained earning is 250, 200,000, the original retained earning, plus an additional $50,000 in earnings. After the stock dividend, capital stock went up 150, retained earning went down 150, therefore capital stock is 650, retained earning is 100. We still have total equity of 750 before and after, before and after, before and after the, uh, before and after the earnings before and after the stock dividend. Now, at the end of the year, we have to prepare, this is um, this is 2012, not 2015, um, work paper entries. We have to prepare work paper entries at the end of the year, work paper entries. So we have to debit capital stock 120,000. Why 120,000? Because they declared 150 times 80%, that's 120. And that's, the, so, so, so they increased their, they increased their uh, their total account by 150. Oops. They increased their total capital stock by 150. We have to reduce it by by 120. Why by 120? It's 80 percent. It's our share, 80 percent. On one one retained earning of S company will have to be debited 200,000, which is the original uh, retained earning. This is to eliminate investment account and recognize non-controlling interest. Debit capital stock five hundred thousand. Credit the investment five sixty and establish the non-controlling interest of one hundred and forty forty thousand. Okay. Now, what happened if the stock dividend had been more than retained earnings? So retained earning was two hundred thousand. So what happened if if the dividend that they paid was more than two hundred thousand? This is called stock dividend issued from post acquisition earning. So now you're issuing dividend. But that dividend is coming from earnings that you earned after the acquisition. Well, it's not a big deal. What you do is you capitalize it. You capitalize it. Capitalize it means what? It means you debit the full amount to retained earnings. Okay? So occasionally, a subsidiary company's capitalized retained earnings arising since acquisition by means of a stock dividend or otherwise. Stock dividend or cash dividend, it doesn't matter. This does not require a transfer to capital surplus on consolidation. So it doesn't really make an indifference on the capital surplus during the consolidation. So basically, if the stock dividend had been more than 200,000, some of the post acquisition earning of the subsidiary would have been capitalized. For example, assume S company made the following entry to record the stock dividend. So if the stock dividend, let's assume it was for 220, guess what? All what we do is we 
capitalize an additional 20,000. So this additional 20,000 is from the post earning because the pre the the post acquisition, the pre acquisition was only 200,000 in retained earnings. So the consolidated earning is the same. So when we consolidate, it doesn't make a difference. However, an additional 20,000 of post acquisition is no longer available because it was capitalized. We removed it from retained, er from retained earning to capital stock. It's no longer available for, um, for dividend. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about dividend from pre acquisition earning pre-acquisition before the acquisition so let, let's assume um, let's assume P company acquired 80 percent and S company on January 2nd 2019 for 560 at the same time S company had a capital stock of 500,000 and retained earnings of 200,000 during the first year of the investment was held S company reported 200,000 of income on December 31st the sub declared and paid $250,000 in cash now what they did is they paid $250,000 in cash Okay, and that's based from uh, compared to the two hundred thousand that they started with. That's an additional fifty thousand. So what would P company do if they paid them two hundred and fifty two hundred? If they pay two hundred and fifty thousand in dividend, they pay two hundred fifty thousand. We P company will get eighty percent, which is two hundred thousand. So P company will debit cash two hundred thousand. They will credit dividend income two hundred thousand times eighty percent. That's dividend income, which is one sixty. Then they will credit investment in S company. Now you have to understand, this is a liquidating dividend. It's considered that they paid more than the retained earnings that they have. So this is, and this entry would reduce the investment account. Remember the investment account was 560. Now we reduce the investment account by 40. The investment account becomes 520,000. This is the investment account. So the eliminate. So now I have to prepare eliminating entries at the end of the year. The first thing we have to eliminate is intercompany dividend. We have to do that. Therefore, we debit dividend income one sixty and we credit dividend declared as company. Then we also have to reverse this forty thousand. We debit forty thousand of dividend investment in S company to reverse it, and we declare dividend declared by forty thousand to reverse this entry. To reverse this entry. Now. Now, now also we need to eliminate the um, equity account for the sub and eliminate the investment account. So what we do is we debit retained earnings 200,000. We debit capital stock 500,000, credit the investment account 560, and credit establish the non-controlling interest 140,000. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating if you're studying for your CPA exam. I don't believe they go this far um, as far as testing you, but it's something you need to be familiar with. You might be asked a question about consolidation when you have a stock dividend. Study hard for the exam. It's worth it. Good luck.